as Trump's fascism is and is the lead story every day. His cozying up to uh, dictators, his uh, obsession with Hitler that has now come out, what he has said about our veterans and what he wants to do with the military against his political adversaries. It's all huge news. This is the future that we're looking at in the next Trump term, if there is one. But this is what voters know right now, that he is killing us. I'm talking about us women. He's killing us. When is the time to sound the alarm? When is the time to start saying, well, does this look like Germany in 1932? If you can't believe it and this is your choice, you're lying to yourself and you're going to ruin this country. His uh, obsession with Hitler that has now come out. Who they are running against. A dark, right. dismal, yeah. fascist, and increasingly obviously fascist person. He's getting through the moment as an aging bullshit artist. Yeah. There's always a tinge of racism in everything he says. Oh, he, he will imprison, he will execute whoever he's allowed to imprison, execute. They're knowingly voting for a fascist. They're voting for a racist. This is not a reach. I could go back and talk about Nazi Germany, and I do it. I do it without any concerns whatsoever. A graphic uh, scene, uh, 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 like he was having uh, oral sex. Oh my God! With the microphone. <laughs> well, there you go, <laughs> man. Oh man, the Trump effect still goes on. Only a couple of weeks since he's been elected. And people are losing their minds. And the biggest story of the day came from MSNBC. Mika and Joe Scarborough bend the knee. The past week, Joe and I have heard from so many people, from political leaders to regular citizens, deeply dismayed by several of President-elect Trump's cabinet selections. And they are scared. Last Thursday, we expressed our own concerns on this broadcast and even said we would appreciate the opportunity to speak with the president-elect himself. On Friday, we were given the opportunity to do just that. Joe and I went to Mar-a-Lago to meet personally with President-elect Trump. It was the first time we have seen him in seven years. Now, we talked about a lot of issues, including abortion, mass deportation, threats of political retribution against political opponents and media outlets. We talked about that a good bit. And it's going to come as no surprise to anybody who watches this show, has watched it over the past year or over the past decade, that we didn't see eye to eye on a lot of issues. And we told him so. What we did agree on was to restart communications. My father often spoke with world leaders with whom he and the United States profoundly disagreed. Uh, that's a task shared by reporters and commentators alike. We had not spoken to President Trump since March of 2020, other than a personal call Joe made to Trump on the morning after the attempt on his life in Butler, Pennsylvania. In this meeting, President Trump was tearful. He was upbeat. He seemed interested in finding common ground with Democrats on some of the most divisive issues. And for those asking why we would go speak to the president-elect during such fraught times, especially between us, I guess I would ask back, why wouldn't we? Five years of political warfare has deeply divided Washington and the country. We have been as clear as we know how in expressing our deep concerns about President Trump's actions and words in the coarsening of public debate. But for nearly 80 million Americans, election denialism, public trials, and January 6th were not as important as the issues that moved them to send Donald Trump back to the White House with their vote. Joe and I realize it's time to do something different. And that starts with not only talking about Donald Trump, but also talking with him. <laughs> Wait a minute now, wait a minute, wait a minute. For the past seven years, y'all yeah, been calling this guy Adolf. Y'all yeah, been calling this guy a fascist. Y'all yeah, been calling this guy a Nazi. And he's going to kill democracy. And all of a sudden, you made a trip to Mar-Largo, sat down with Adolf, 
and wave the white flag. I'm sorry, Mr. Trump. Please forgive us. This got to be the most <laughs> unbelievable thing I heard all week. MSNBC, no, they lost. The ratings have been plummeting. Half of the viewership done left. People got tired of you lying to them, gaslighting them, scaring them half to death about everything. So all this talk about him being Adolf was just a talk. Because deep inside, you did not believe that. Before Trump ran for office, Joe Scarborough used to be friends, buddy-buddy, with Trump. Joining us on the phone, uh, the front runner, the Republican race for president, Donald Trump. It's official. You're doing it. You Why? are doing Why it. Why did you decide to do it this year when you passed all those other years? Well, I looked at it, but not very seriously. Uh, Mitt Romney let a lot of people down last time. He was supposed to do better, and he, like, disappeared. He choked. Something happened to him at the end. Your three children uh, that, that I mean, everybody talks about uh, how they're hard workers. They work right with you. Uh, and, and I always talk about Howard Stern because right. a kind of tough, kind of tough audience. Mm. He's talking about your kids. How he said whatever you say about Donald T Trump, he must be a great father because his kids are 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 really something. And just like every liberal, once they got wind that Trump was going to win the presidency in 2016, they all turned on him. And now, eight years later, they come back groveling on their hands and knees, begging for Mr. Trump to be their friend. Yeah, the question is, though, how do we get there? Hyperbole and personal attacks will not work. My hair on fire <laughs> doesn't work. We've all seen that. What also does not work is threatening political opponents with arrest, harassment, and even jail. That is a failed path. Recent history has proven that impeachments and trials turn those on trial into political martyrs and only make them more popular with the American people. Just ask Bill Clinton and Donald Trump. Now, me, myself, I'm petty. I wouldn't do it. But Trump, you know, again, he's well advanced about this. He knows how to use a useful idiot. Now, they will not come... They're going to be more loyal to Trump now because they know if you burn him again, it's over for you guys. Trump is going to be in office for four years and he's going to try to do a lot, try to change the world in these four years. And he's going to try to do his best to turn the ship around. And it's not going to help you if you're going to be out there barking and talking about he's a fascist every five minutes because nobody want to hear that shit no more. Not only that, we have... AOC, Congresswoman from New York, she even bend the knee. The other day she gets on her Twitter, on her ex, and she changed her gender back to Congresswoman. New York Congresswoman and progressive superstar, if you want to call her that, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, went viral yesterday. This was after followers noticed that her pronouns were missing from her oh, ex profile. No. So where did they go? Well, two years ago, she apologized for not having them, claiming, quote, they fell off. What does that mean? Words don't just fall. Mm -mm. But there was no apology. This go around at a time when many are blaming gender issues for the Democrats' big election defeats last week. She went and changed it because she sees the writing on the wall. Nobody want to hear no more. The woke era is over. Wake the fuck up. AOC is changing her tune. MSNBC changed their tune. Now, if I see Joy Reid come and grovel, I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to shave my hair if I see Joy Reid or Rachel Madcow comes on and say, Donald Trump, forgive me. Because that's basically what Mika and Joe did. I'll tell you, a lot of Democratic leaders we've talked to this past week since the election have told Mika and me it's time for a new approach. And when I say top Democrats, I mean top Democrats. If I see Joy Reid and Rachel Madcow do the same thing, I'm going to shave my hair and put peroxide and do the Joy Reid haircut. It's hair-free summer, everybody. Enjoy it. <laughs> I'm going to lose my mind if I see this. 
Anyway, guys, we got to protect this man at all costs. Let's go.